Hello, good morning students. Today I'm going to talk about development of communication skills. Huh? Okay. Um, what are we going to, what am I going to talk about? First is learning outcomes. Huh? First, recognize the necessity for good communication. Explain the types and modes of communication. Yeah? Identify and display the communication aids in practice. And finally, relate the communication keys and attitude for team approach. Okay. So what, under communication, the most important thing is essentially the transfer of ideas, messages, or information from one person to another. The communication involves five basic elements. They are first the sender or the, otherwise the encoder. Second, message. Three, channel. Fourth, receiver or the decoder. And finally, the feedback. Communication breakdown can occur at any one of these elements. Huh? There may be breakdown with, uh, for unknown reasons, but still the message has to be transmitted. Okay. So the sender, what does a sender means that he or she encodes a message, selects a channel for transmitting the message to receiver. From the sender's perspective, one needs to have the following essential skills. Okay. First is skill to compose the message. So what are you going to write in that message? You must think beforehand. You can also write it down and keep it ready and then send it, send to the person. Eh? And the skill to send the message that slowly by learning, you'll get a skill. Eh? Like any trade, eh? you get the skill. Okay. What are the components of communication? On the first, the sender one. Eh? The originator of the message, his objective should be clearly defined. He should know the interests and needs of his audience. He should know the channels of communication. And finally, he should know his abilities and limitations. Okay. The message in line with the objective. The message should be in line with the objective. That's a very important thing. Huh? See? Secondly, the base on felt needs, clear and understandable. You know, the message should be clear. It, you know, make it. Sometimes we can make it simple, uh, so that the person can easily understand what you are trying to say, what what the message contains. Okay, it should be specific and accurate, and timely and adequate, interesting and culturally and social socially appro appropriate okay three channels of communication the common one will be interpersonal or face-to-face -face communication okay others are social media tv radio dramas okay on the receiver part what he or she who receives the message should be able to understand what was said may not receive or understand due to lack of interest or attention. See, so these are the drawbacks you can have, huh? okay? Now, the audience may be single group and of two types. What are the two types? Controlled and versus the uncontrolled. What's the meaning of this controlled type? It is held together by a common interest. Second, it is a homogeneous group. For example, a group of school children in a school, or for, a, for example, or here, a group of you students in a college here, okay? What versus the uncontrolled group will be what? It's a group which has gathered together because of curiosity. Example, an audience of a street play in a busy area. People gather around out of curiosity and nothing much. You know? They just want to see. They may not even look at the whole thing. Just to see what is it. Okay. And then they, they just move on. You know. 
if the common interest, they will stay on till the end. But if the, uh, with curiosity, they just want to find out to satisfy their curiosity. What is going on? Oh, oh this one, uh, nothing much. Uh, they have some other more important work to do and they will move, move on. Okay. Now feedback. The flow of information from the audience to the senders. Example, opinion polls, interviews, questionnaire surveys, surveys. Communication. What are the types of communication? Direction of communication skill, mode of communication and communication aids. Types of communication. Basically, there are four types. Huh? One way and two ways. Verbal and non-verbal, formal and informal, and written. Okay. Now, what is one-way communication is didactic. Huh? Okay. The flow of information is one way from the sender to the receiver. So, what are the drawbacks? Knowledge is imposed. Learning is authoritative. Little audience participation. No feedback. Okay. Now, two-way communication. Something like a, a dialogue. Huh? Okay, so two-way communication is a dialogue. One example. So, part, the participation is from both the sender to receiver and from receiver to sender. Learning is actively democratic. More likely to influence behavior. Verbal and non-verbal communication. What are the verbal signs first? Yes, I understand. Could you tell me more about this? Paraphrasing. Okay. Uh, silence, I think so you should come under more on a non-verbal signals. Huh? Okay. Under non-verbal signals, there's body posture, tilt of the head, facial expression, gestures, eye expression, smiling, synchronization. And I feel silence should be also on a non-verbal signal. Huh? There's no speech, nothing, silent. Okay. And formal and informal communication. Huh? What are they? Formal communication follows the line of authority. Informal communication is conversing with friends or colleagues. What is written communication? Letters, memos, email. Minutes of meetings, report, instructions, and pictorial aids. It can be studied, reflected, and on and observed, absorbed at the receiver's own pace. Okay, he can. If the person doesn't understand in the first reading, he can slowly study it, reflect on it. How is it useful to him? What best can he make out of it? Whatever, whatever the the communication, the written communication, and how well it is absorbed. Huh? All can be done at his own time and, you know, and pace. It is permanent and makes a lasting impression. Words can be written, rewritten, edited until the communication is seen as clear and accurate and is ready to be sent to the receiver. Useful when information has to be sent to large numbers of people. Communication aids. Classified into th three categories. Auditory aids, visual aids, and a combination of both these aids. Huh? Okay. Now, auditory aids are based on the principles of sound, electricity, and magnetism. Most commonly used audio aids are what? Megaphones, huh? loudspeakers, huh? megaphones, microphones, gramophone records and disc, tape recorder, sound amplifiers, and radios. Okay. Now, what about the visual aids? Projected aids and non-projected aids. Projected aids, the projection from source to screen, films, cinemas, bioscope, film strips, slides, overhead projector. Okay. And um, non-projected aids don't require any projections. Blackboard, picture, cartoon, photographs, charts, posters, flip chart, flashcards, 
printed materials like leaflets, pamphlets, folders, booklets, and brochures, models, and specimens. Okay. The combination of audio and visual. Available modern media, advantage, sound and sight can be combined together to create a better presentation, such as television, tape and slide combination, video cassette players and recorders, motion pictures and cinemas, multimedia com computers. Notice video cassette players are not in vogue, it's outdated already, now it's all in uh, disc uh, and uh, USB drives, uh, okay. And doctor's barrier to effective communication. What are our drawbacks? Huh? What are our barriers? We we can uh, feel or you know, what are our drawbacks? You can say to effective communications. So what will what are this lack of specific knowledge? Is it uh, counseling skills? Some of us may have <coughs> good counseling skills, some may not be very good. So the, the better the counseling uh, counseling skills you have, the more effective it will be, yeah? the communication. Uh, the, the end result will be much better. The time and appropriate resources. Okay. First minutes, try not to be late. Concentrate fully and only on the patient. Take care of the patient's comfort. Organize the environment, yeah. Organize the environment means if it is too warm and all that, have an air conditioner or have a fan to make it more comfortable, you know, you see. And not so noisy, uh, quiet area will be much better. To gain all the attention of, uh, and, uh, of the patient. Also pay attention to the physical distance, huh? and, uh, and of course, uh, introduce yourself. Okay. Development of patient communication skills. It includes both verbal and non-verbal communication and the ability to listen to the patient's concerns. Welcoming the patient. Make eye contact and smile. Shake hands. Position your height to align your eyes with the same level as the patient's. Address them by their name. Now, this is very important, huh? You know, it's always, it will be, the patient will feel comfortable when you address them by their name. And if there's a title, use the title also for that patient. Huh? If, uh, you know, um, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, or doctors, or, or professors, or gato, or whatever. Huh? Smile and try to make the patient feel at ease. Invite the patient to sit in a dental chair and ensure their comfort. Seat yourself facing the patient, preferably at the same level. Development of patient's communication skills. Agenda setting. Ask, why have you come to see me today? Or what can I do for you today? Anything else? What is the problem as far as you are concerned? Uh, this will comes under a shared agenda. Huh? Determine patient expectations. When discussing the problems, ask the patient, what are you specifically concerned about? Ask the patient to prioritize their concerns. Ask the patient what they think should be done to treat their problem. Development of patient communication skills. Listen to the patient's story kindly without interrupting. Let them talk first. Huh? Let them talk. You know, let them, you know, so let's not, uh, let, not interrupting, you know, let them finish their, their story, whatever they want to tell. Maintain eye contact, that's quite important. Huh? Just look at the eyes and, bod and mirror body language. Adopt similar postures, gestures and expressions. Identify the patient's feeling, label them and express concern. Development of patient's Communication skill, matching voice and vocabulary. Patient's perception of understanding and concerns may be enhanced by matching his or her rate of speech, volume, and vocabulary. Empathy. When patient brings up a non-dental concern, empathize. 
do not express surprise and then bring the topic back to patient's dental concerns. Yeah, they may say something out of the context. Carry on with that. Listen to give us a, 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 a year to that, what they wish to say. Maybe, you know, and uh, don't, cut, cut, uh, don't cut off immediately. You know? Let them finish, even if it is non-dental related subject, okay? Of course, if it is going too much, too too long, then you can say, like, "Okay, sorry." Uh, no, you can interrupt maybe at that time if if you feel it's going on uh, excessively long. Okay, work has shown to enhance the communication between dentist and patient. Development of patient communication skills. Check if the patient understand what has been discussed during the consultation, and try to assess any new understanding. Questions. Create opportunity for the patient to ask questions during and at the end of any consultation. Yeah, this is good. Always good. Huh? Ask the patient. If you have anything uh, to ask, any doubts, uh, that will be... When they ask questions and doubt, that shows that the patient has understood, assimilated what all... Uh, what you are trying to say, you know, that's always a good thing. And a common language. Avoid technical dental terms and use patient's language to understand. Yeah, this is always, you use too much of uh, dental terms, then you may have to spend time explaining what the dental terms are, you know, the technical, the, me the medical terms and all that. Is it? So use simple language for the patients to understand and save time. Keys to successful communication. Always be courteous. Uh, this is very important. When you are courteous, you can say, oh, some of the problems will automatically also be lessened, you know. Be consistent and clear. Listen to others and show interest. Patients who are made to feel at ease and encouraged to talk freely are more likely to disclose their real reason for consulting. This is very true, huh? Okay, patients who are made to feel easy. They are easy, yeah, and you are very... Uh, approachable, you are kind, they're having a smiling face, yeah? they'll feel encouraged, they'll open up easily to uh, freely to to discuss with you, you know. So this is really a plus point and it is, it is all on your side, you see. Take home message, both patient and doctor should participate in discussion and planning for treatment. Increase health knowledge and understanding among patients, uh, this is very important. Uh? And nowadays, patients are also very knowledgeable with the internet around all the information, whatever you want. And that's why many people, patients, they self-treat themselves also. But luckily, in, the, in our, this thing is mainly surgery, surgical work, which they can't, you know. We have very little on medical uh, the same, uh, the diseases to treat, which they can, uh, they'll acquire from the internet nowadays, okay. Second, and lastly, treat patients in a humanistic and adult manner, okay? Okay, dear students, thank you for listening. Hope you'll have a good day. Yeah? Bye. I'm Dr. Martin, uh, lecturer from PIDC. Okay.